In this tutorial, we will install a self-hosted N8N on a render.com starter instance and add a disk to store the data. This way, when our N8N instance restarts, we will not lose our data and can continue working with our workflows. So let's dive in to see how we can set up self-hosted N8N on render.com and create a workflow to test our webhost. To do this, navigate to your GitHub account and search for N8N to find and open the main repository. Click Fork to create a copy of N8N in your namespace. Choose a name for your fork and leave the rest and click on Create Fork. Creating a fork of N8N let us manage and control how and when we want to update and redeploy our N8N instance. Otherwise, every time the main N8N repository is updated, Render would start a redeploy. Now that we have our own fork of N8N in our own GitHub account, it's time to go to the next step and navigate to render.com. In our last video, we set up N8N on a free instance of Render. But for this tutorial, we want to use a paid instance. So we have to enter our billing information before setting up the starter instance and add a disk to it. After adding the billing information, the next step is to connect the render account to GitHub. In my case, I already connected render.com to my GitHub account, as you can see in the account settings. After connecting GitHub to render, you can create a new web service. Search for your recently forked repository. Select it and connect to it. The name of the repository will be used as the name of the web service. For the region, choose a region near to you. In my case, I use Frankfurt because it's near to my location and follows data privacy laws in the EU. Leave the rest of the information as is and select Starter for the instance type. It has some advantages over the free account. For example, zero downtime and SSH access. So after testing the free account, it's now time to level up and create our starter instance. We will add environment variables in the next step. So for now, just click on deploy web service. This will take some time. You can check the process in the logs. It will take a few minutes to build the service and you can see status building. After the build is finished, it will start to deploy the service and the status will change to in progress. One thing to note is that N8N needs an encryption key. Later, we will create an encryption key and add it as an environment variable. After the deployment is finished, the status will change to live. You can copy the address of the new render instance and navigate to the address. A fresh copy of N8N will be waiting for us to set up an owner account. Here we can enter our information for the owner account. If you want, you can also answer some questions and click Get Started. You will finally reach the N8N dashboard. We named this workflow Test. This workflow will be deleted as soon as we redeploy the web service. But before that, we can add a webhook to see the default webhook URL. We add a webhook component. Since we did not define the webhook URL, you can see that the URL contains HTTP and local host. It is not accessible from other services on the internet. So we need to provide a proper webhook URL in the environment variable. But as soon as we add environment variables, we need to redeploy our web service and lose the data on the render instance. To prevent the data loss, we use in our last video an external service like Superbase. But for this video, we will add a disk which is accessible to all of our instances on render.com. We navigate to the disk section and click on add disk. For the mount path, we enter slash opt slash render slash dot n8n and copy the path to the clipboard. For the disk size, we choose 1 GB and finally click on add disk. Now it's time to prepare our environment variables. 
and the first one we have still in our clipboard. We can use a simple text file or an obsidian node to paste the mount path to the variable n8n underscore user underscore folder. Next, we can navigate to the render web service and copy the address of the render instance and fill in the corresponding environment variables. Paste it for the editor base URL and webhook URL. For host, remove the HTTPS as we use 443 for the port and HTTPS for the protocol. Now we have all of the information except the N8N encryption key. To get this, go to a random key generation website and generate an encryption key, copy it and put it as the N8N encryption key. With this, all of the environment variable needed for our instance is ready. We can copy it to our clipboard and go to render.com. Here you have two options. Either you can enter there one by one or go to the add from .env and paste all of the information at once. As you can see, all eight variables are created. After setting all of the environment variables, we save, rebuild, and redeploy our render instance. You can go to events to see the progress. This will take some minutes and after the deployment is done, our system is live again. You can also check it in the logs. Then you can copy the render instance address and navigate to it. As you can see, our previous information is deleted and we must create the owner account again from scratch. Provide the same information and create the owner account and go to the dashboard. This time we call our workflow ping webhook. Search for webhook to add it to our workflow. Notice that the webhook URL is not the default localhost anymore. It now starts with our render instance URL. Now it can be accessed from other web services on the internet. For the response, we use the response to webhook node. Go back, search for response for webhook and add it. We define the response as JSON and define status to be webhook is working. Then go back. When we test our workflow, it waits for a trigger event. We could open the webhook, copy the link and paste it in an app like Postman and send the get request to the trigger URL of our webhook. When we send the get request to our webhook, we receive the response as expected in JSON format. Status webhook is working. When we navigate to N8N, we see that we received a request from Postman with a lot of information. If we go back to our workflow, we see the green check marks. We see that our workflow on our self hosted N8N on render worked as expected. It was triggered by a webhook and an external event over the internet. To verify that the information is persistent, you can manually restart the web service on render. Normally, all of the configuration would be lost and you would have to register again. But here, when our system comes back, we see that our information is still there and our ping webhook is still present. So in the last video, we set up N8N on a free instance of render and use Superbase to store the data. And in this video, we use the starter instance of render and use a disk to store the information. Now we can continue with our series of N8N self-hosted videos and create workflows to connect N8N to other services. If you are interested in AI automation or finance, you can join our community on school and connect with other like-minded people. Good luck setting up your self-hosted N8N instance on render.com.